Okay, this will be video four of the structure text uh, video series that we've been doing. Uh, so just to recap, we've done a if, then, and else function. We've done a case function. We've done a for and do function. And we've done a while function. Uh, this will actually be the for function, um, but there is another one, a repeat until. <clears throat> so to, to go over things, uh, doing a for function, so a, a for do instruction is basically used to uh, fill an array. So we've had to change our array, uh, or I'm sorry, we've had to change our tag structure for the current state to an array, uh, and we've changed, we've, we've kept the state as a dent. So uh, if you were to look at the tag database, we've kept the, so we've changed the, uh, the current state to an actual dent which is a dent of nine uh, we in our case we, we could have kept it a, a dent of six um, then we use the current state is still a dent um, so we did that because we're going to show how to fill an array um, and then how to reset that array uh, using uh, the structured text format so to start off with, uh, to kind of go over and recap, we are using a uh, RS Logics 5000. We are using the RS Logics 5000 emulate chassis. So there is no hardware. Uh, this is a basically the same thing you can do at, at uh, with your own PC as long as you have the RS or RS Logics 5000 and you have RS Logics 5000 emulate. So without further ado, uh, we'll get this started. Uh, so uh, first off, go to your start pending edit of the routine, and that's again this uh, notepad looking uh, tab. So what we'll do, and we'll kind of, this is kind of a mixture of an if-then scenario and the fact of using a for, uh, so a for statement. So we'll start it off saying if sim timer done because we remember we're using our sim uh, sim timer as a uh, basically a bit shift if you would and we'll go over that here in a minute then we'll put then we want to say for state and we want to say equals 0 to, uh, in our case, 6 by 1, and then a do function, and then current state, which is, again, our array. And with that said, we're going to use an indirect tag addressing. So we're basically using the state. We're using the state for the indirect tag address. So with that said, we'll be using the, uh, the state to basically populate the, an array. And we'll put, now we'll go ahead and populate the, the rest of the data and we want to index the current state current state so current state uh, and it will say plus one so now that we've got that in there we want to end our in or and then remember re yeah remember you have to put your uh, in marks uh, so then we want to end our if and what this is going to do is every time the timer goes done then it is going to index the state from zero, 0 to 6 by 1 
So then it's going to take the current state, and if you have, if you remember, this is reading left to right. Then it's going to take the current state with the indirect address of state, and it's equal to the cur the current state tag with the indirect indirect address of state plus one. So what this is going to do, if we left it just like this, it's going to index and constantly index. Um, and I'll show you that. So this is not really what we want, but I just want to show you the functionality of this. So again, we have wrote it properly so that it, it did uh, take. Now we'll go to view and we'll watch. And if you look, our, our current state is has it has exceeded our 0 to 6 because we do not have any other logic down here resetting it. So what I'd like to do now is show you how to input the data to reset it. So we want to say if current state which is our array and then again we want to make sure we we use our indirect tag addressing is greater than sorry I put the wrong indicator 7 then we want for state and then We want zero to six. And then do current state, which is our array again, and then we go and do our indirect tag addressing. This is basically clearing all the, the properties, right? So we want to say equals zero. And then we want to end our for statement. So end for. And again, I like to keep all everything you know capitalized correctly. Uh, I put the wrong indicator again. That's very particular. But the, the software, remember, the software will tell you that. So there's no worries. I mean, we all have typos. Okay, so now we have an end if. You see this stuff is still counting because I haven't assembled this. So we're saying if the current state, which is our array, and our state is greater than 7, then we want to take the current state, or the, the state, and the state 0 through 6, we want to go ahead and change the current state with, so that the current state being an array, the array value right here that we have populating, and then we want to change it uh, via the uh, indirect tag addressing to 0. And then we end our for statement and we end our if statement. So we actually have two statements inside of these both of these uh, statements. So we have the first statement as an if, which is the outside statement, and then we end it, end the if with that, and then we have the second statement as the for, for do, and then we end the for do with, or the for, I should say. So just make sure when you open a statement, you close it with the same statement. Okay, so now we'll come in here and see what the logic is doing. It should be resetting at this point. So yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So of course, you know, we only have 6, so what we could do is it will say 6 and then change that and 
We'll do a watch feature again. We'll go one, two, three, six. One, two, three, zero. So zero, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you see how easily that is changed. Um, and you can index that as high or as low as you want to. Um, but I will say uh, what we can do is come in here and we can slow this down. See right now we have the timer, the simulate timer, which is a simulate done that we're using. We can slow it down to a two second rate. And then, and again, this is the simulation logic that I put in. Uh, I mean, I could go over that, but I mean, honestly, I want, want to give the, the understanding of what we're doing currently, which is the for statement or the for construct. So now every two seconds, the simulate timer done bit will come on, then it will index the, the current state by the state by one, as you see happening, right? So one, two, three, and we can break this down into the different arrays. Um, I, I didn't break it down as far as I, you know, I could have. I could say, you know, one, two, three, four, five, you know, keep going like that. But for the sake of it being that uh, for this video to keep it short and un to give an understanding of uh, just that you're using a an array on the first value and then a dent on the second value, which is your indirect tag. So uh, when you have you combine everything, you know that this the state equals the indir our, the indirect tag, which is our state equals what's in the current state array. So with that whole said, with that whole thing said, you have to look at the whole equation right there is to look at the indirect tag or the indirect tag addressing. So, uh, so to go back to what we're saying is in the first statement, we have the done bit for the simulate timer. Then we index the state from zero to, to six by one. And then we plus it by, we add one each time, right? And then to reset that, we say that if the current state indirect address is greater than six, then for, sorry, for the state, which is the dent, we want the zero through six, through six, do the indirect address and set it to zero. So the, the array and the indirect ad or the, the state of the array, which is the indirect address, it, we want to set it to zero. Now, once we've done that, we close everything. We close our for statement. We close our, our if statement, and then we watch it run. So again, um, and the, the simulation logic behind this is, is something very similar to what we've been doing through the other videos. Uh, you can kind of come back through the other videos and see what, what I did. Um, you know, we have the videos uh, we have already. We have one, two, three, and this will be the fourth video for the, uh, the structured text. Um, so, we, so far we've been through the if, then, else, which... This is kind of why I wanted to start with the if then statement, uh, because we're using, we're now combining two statements. We're using the if in or the if then uh, statement. We're not having any else in this, but we are saying if this, if this happens, then do this. So then we're, we're actually uh, using the for statement. So we're combining two. But, um, so that to get back to what I was saying, we already have the first video, which is if, then, else. The second video is a case video. Shows a case construct, by the way of programming a case. We have a for do, which is what we've done right here. And we have a while do. Um, so we've done the, uh, we've done the, this is the fourth one, and we will be doing the repeat until next. Um, so 
to give a clarification. This is best used uh, in the focus of using an array and to shift that array. Uh, so again, uh, you still see the, the functionality of, of so when we go to watch. <clears throat> if we watch the array, it's still shifting the data. So it will keep continuously doing that. Um, and again, uh, so I just wanted to clarify everything and, and show how to use this. Um, and again, if we, if we took the bottom statement out, it would just steady, steadily count and just keep counting. Um, so what we can do too is like you could change this number and if you want it to reset higher, you can just change that number to higher. Um, so this is a real kind of, it's, it's similar to what we've been doing, but in other words, in this video, I've changed the current state to an array of, ten, of nine. So I've kept the state as a dent. And again, that's just, I wanted to show the fact of what you do for a for do, which is loading in the best practice. I mean, the easiest thing that, that most people do with the for do is to add an array. Um, is to shift the data from the indirect tag into the array but have it limited by what your statement says so um, again this being the fourth video i hope you've uh, understood what a for do uh, the function of a for do and how we use it in the best uh, the, well i wouldn't say the best way i would say a way to use the for do um, so again, to go over thing, uh, everything, we've got one through four done on the videos. We're going to be doing one more video. Um, if you like what, what you see, please uh, subscribe. Uh, give me, send me a comment. Let me know what you would like to see further than this. If you would like to see any other topics, if you would like to see something that you think would add value in a different way, you know, uh, again, my philosophy is, is kind of paying it forward. We do, uh, in the programming and in the software industry, things are changing all the time. So we really have to stay up on what we're doing. So I feel like it's best that we all share the information that we can. So if you would like to, just leave me a comment, subscribe, and we can you know keep the ball rolling and, and just keep gaining uh, as much information as we possibly can to keep everything in a continuous growth. Again, I'd like to thank you for taking your time watching the video, and uh, we'll have more to come. And what we're going to do eventually is we're going to use these states to actually tie in with our servo program controls that we've done in, in the prior videos. So we're going to actually tie the two together, and you'll see how the states get transmitted and used in uh, with structure text to control a servo system. Okay, well, thank you for your time, and again, hit the subscribe button if you like. Thank you.